Bonjour les jeunes, j'espère que vous allez bien. Euh, alors aujourd'hui, nous allons faire notre classe de français numéro 6, mais c'est la leçon 17, c'est la 17e leçon dans votre livre. Donc, euh, nous allons commencer par dire notre proverbe. L'argent ne fait pas le bonheur. L'argent ne fait pas le bonheur. What do you think um, this little proverb means? I know you have the, the meaning of it, but why do you think we say that? I can't hear you. <laughs> well, yes, money does not make happiness. We know that, right? What truly makes us happy is to have the Lord in our lives. And... Um, Thankfully, the Lord blesses us, right? Money in itself is not bad or evil. It's the love for money that is evil, right? And that is when we love money more than anything else. That's when it does not bring any happiness. Um, so money does not make you happy. Money is something, is a tool that you have um, to use for your life for your to you know for your your life and your family but also to bless others to um bring to help the gospel to go forth and people to hear about the lord so you use your money with purpose don't you that is what money is um it's not in and of itself it does not bring any happiness um all right So, let's go over our vocabulaire. So, this vocabulary is all about school. And I think most of you will know those words, but it'll be a good review. We haven't reviewed them in a long time. Um, and then we'll go on with our grammaire. All right. So, numéro un, l'école. Répétez après moi. Repeat after me. Very important you repeat. I'm going to say it twice. So, first time listen. Second time repeat with me. L'école, l'école, school. Numéro 2, l'élève, l'élève. Now notice, I'm just going to say that about this one, has two accents. First accent is accent aigu, right? Accent aigu is e, le. And the second one is accent grave, e. L'élève, l'élève, student. Whether it's a girl or a boy, it doesn't matter. Numéro 3. Le maître. Le maître. La maîtresse. La maîtresse. So that's your elementary school teacher. So when I was a little girl and I wanted to call my teacher, you know, here in English is teacher, can you come help me? I would say maîtresse, est-ce que vous pouvez m'aider? Ou maître, pouvez-vous m'aider? Right? So... That's how you call them. Now, when you get to high school and above, you don't say maître ou maîtresse anymore. You say le professeur. Le professeur. And you still say madame, if it's a girl, madame le professeur, even though um, she is uh, feminine. You still use le. Um, that's the proper way of saying it. Madame le professeur. I used to, uh, teachers were only men in another era. And, um, and so that's where it comes from. And it kind of stuck with it. Uh, Madame le professeur. But if you said Madame la professeur, I think it wouldn't be an issue at all uh, today. All right. Next, le pupitre. Le pupitre, which is school desk. All right. Le crayon. Le crayon. Pencil. Le stylo. Le stylo. Pen. Le cahier. We don't pronounce the H. Le cahier. Notebook. Le livre. Le livre. Book. La gomme. La gomme. Eraser. La règle. La règle. Remember, it's accent grave. Est. La règle. Ruler. Le papier, le papier, paper. Le feutre, le feutre, 
felt marker, specifically felt. Uh, when you say feutre in French, it's a felt marker. It's not like a marker like this, okay? That would be called a marker. So, le feutre is different. Le taille crayon, le taille crayon. That's taillé means to sharpen. So, it's a sharpener. La craie, la craie is chalk. All right, very good. So, we're going to go on with grammar because you have le verbe prendre this week. And prendre is an irregular verb that you have to know because it is used in so many different ways. It has so many different meanings. If you open the French dictionary and went on de prendre to look, there would be so many definitions. It has so many nuances. Um, so you need to know that. Don't be overwhelmed by it. We're gonna write 20 of them. Uh, so, but don't be overwhelmed. You don't have to know all of them by heart, but I want you to realize that so that when you see that verb in, in French, when we're reading, cause, uh, we're, we're starting to read French history right together, which by the way, a little parenthesis, when I sent you the paper of French history, right? When I'm reading it, if you're only listening and then trying to translate, that's not a bad thing, but that's not what I want you to do. I want you to follow, that's why I printed out that paper, you know, the whole paper of the first chapter. I want you to follow with me. Put your finger on there and follow with me and say it at the same time I'm saying it. Even if you say it wrong, it's okay. You're gonna start hearing it. You, you can just say it whispering. You don't have to say it super loud so you can still hear me more. But I want you to follow um, with me and I want you to read with me because you're gonna start auto-correcting auto yourself as you start realizing where you make mistakes when I say something and you're not saying it the same way. And we're, with practice like that, you're gonna learn so much about how to speak in French. So it's important that you do that. Please don't just list, sit back and listen to the story. That's not the purpose of it. I really want you to follow with me and read with me. Do your best, nobody's hearing you. It's a perfect place right now that you're at home doing this. You don't have to feel embarrassed or anything. It's okay to make mistakes, you're learning. You've got, but you have to practice speaking in French. Reading is one of the best way to do that. And when we get back in class, I'm gonna have a, a little book of stories and audio stories, and we're gonna do that. We're gonna practice that together. So start practicing at home when we do French history, okay? All right, end of the parenthesis. So um, let's go over and um, talk about prendre. So I want you to grab a, um, uh, I'm sorry. I want you to grab a line paper, grab a line paper, and we're going to write a few things about prendre. So at the top, write your name and date on the right. And then as a title, write Francais. And then notice I put a little city right under the C because it makes the C, it softens it. So it doesn't franquet, it's français. Okay, so the city is like a little S right below, a mini S right below the C. All right, français, and then right under français, I want you to write verbe prendre. Verbe prendre, all right? Which is a verb prendre. And, um, I want you to go ahead and write singular and then over here write plural and we're going to conjugate it, okay? So, je prends, tu prends, il prend, noes, Nous prenons one M. Vous prenez.
sommet, one end, il, with an S, prennent, two end. All right? So go ahead and write this. Oh yeah, I should have put a capital. Okay. And your, the T as well. I don't know why I didn't do that. You don't have to. But okay, so, so this is it. Now, I'm going to erase. You can pause and write it. Now, I want you to write meaning. Meaning. Meanings. The different meanings. With an S. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna write them all. Well, not all because I believe there are more, but the main ones. Okay, so write the meaning. You're gonna write one to take, two to have, oh, to have, three to catch, four. To assume five to take up six to pick up seven to take in eight to capture. Nine, to take over. Ten, can you still see? To seize. Eleven, to acquire. Twelve, to drink. Je prends un verre. Je prends un verre. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking a glass of something. Okay, 13. To get on. 14. To occupy. 15. To catch on. 16. To charge. Deset, to come over. Dix-huit, to make a note of. Nineteen, to cut. Twenty, to book. So, I mean, you can see how those meanings are so different one from the other. There's just so many different ways to use poem. So, we use it a lot, and you're going to encounter it a lot when we read. And so, I wanted you to have an idea. Sorry, I'm in front of it. But I wanted you to have an idea of kind of the, the different type of meaning so that you don't just think that it means to take because that, that's the main one, but there's a lot of other ones too, okay? For instance, when you say, um, no, I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, so, Now, I would like to talk about the partitive de. The partitive de. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of this. Okay, the partitive de. De. So, de means, or partitive, the partitive de means it's a part of a whole. I want you to go ahead and grab another line paper 
and same thing, right français. So de means a part of a whole or it means some. Any. Okay? So when it's masculine, when it's masculine and singular, which means one, just one, right? The number is just one. And then masculine is the gender. Um, we say du or de, and then an apostrophe is the word starts with a, a vowel. So oiseau, de l'eau, etc. Okay? So it's de, du, or de, and an L apostrophe. If it's feminine, and singular, then it's de la, or de L apostrophe, again, right? Now, if it's masculine or feminine, but plural, so more than one, what are you going to use? Do you know? You should know. It's day. Day. All right. And it's important that you know how that works because you use it quite a bit as well. And um, don't be overwhelmed. You just need to understand how to use it, okay? You'll be doing fine. But for, for, for example, let me give you an example. If you say, I do not have any sisters. I do not have any sister. I'm gonna erase this. Hopefully you wrote everything down from your paper if you don't know. Um, so you're going to write, I do not have any sisters. I do not have any sisters. How will you use de there? I do not have, how do we, how do we, je, Ne pas, remember the sandwich, right, with the verb, je ne pas, and then what will you use here? You know, sister is sœur, je ne pas de sœur, so you're going to write de here, okay? So that if you don't have any of the sentences negative, if you have a negative sentence, so right here I want you to write negative sentence. Okay, after a negative sentence you use de, and then whatever you, your noun is, okay? Je n'ai pas de soeur, je n'ai pas de stylo, je n'ai pas de règle. Je n'ai pas de feutre, etc. Okay? Now, you use de before an adjective modifying a noun, even if plural. For instance, I have good friends. So let's write this here. I have good friends. I have good friends. So here you would say, I have, you know how to do, to say that, j'ai, and then good is bon, and friend is ami. So here you would, what would you put here? J'ai de bons amis, j'ai de bons amis. But if you wanted to just say, I have friends, in this, in, the, in French it would be j'ai des amis. So I have good friends, 
but I have friends. You wouldn't say j'ai deux amis because that sounds like I have two friends. Because remember, deux is un, deux, trois. So it sounds like I have good friends. So I have friends is j'ai des, plural. J'ai des amis. Okay, you just need to know that. Um, all right. So de is one little word with many uses and many exceptions. So don't worry about it. But if you enter it, now you know it means some, right? Any. So, and this is kind of how we use it. So if you encounter it, you kind of know what it means. All right, very good. Now, look at your dialogue. All right, we're going to go over your dialogue real fast. La maîtresse commence la classe. La maîtresse commence la classe. Répétez après moi. La maîtresse commence la classe. I'm always going to say sentences twice. And what that means is that the second time you have to repeat it. First time I say it, second time you repeat it with me. Elle dit, bonjour mes élèves. Elle dit, bonjour mes élèves. Prenez vos livres. Prenez vos livres. Aujourd'hui, nous étudions la grammaire. Aujourd'hui, nous étudions la grammaire. Sur le pupitre, il y a un stylo, un cahier et des papiers. Sur le pupitre, il y a un stylo, un cahier et des papiers. Aussi, les élèves ont des crayons, des feutres de toutes couleurs et une règle dans leur pupitre. Aussi, les élèves ont des crayons, des feutres de toutes couleurs et une règle dans leur pupitre. Ils sont prêts. Ils sont prêts. All right, I want you to notice the quotation mark. Did you notice the quotation mark? That is just the typical uh, quotation marks in French. So, we do the the one at the top that look like this. And the French don't do that. The French do this. So if you encounter that, you know those means quotation mark. Okay? All right. So let's translate it. You try first, and then I say it, and then you see if that's what you thought it was. Okay? Ready? Go. First sentence. La maîtresse commence la classe. The teacher starts her class. The class. Elle dit, bonjour mes élèves. She says, hello my students. Prenez vos livres. Take your books. Aujourd'hui, nous étudions la grammaire. Today, we are studying grammar. Sur le pupitre, il y a un stylo, un cahier et des papiers. So, on the, what is pupitre? School desk. There is a pen, a notebook, and some papers. Aussi, les élèves ont des crayons, des feutres de toutes couleurs et une règle dans leur pupitre. Also, the students have pencils, um, felt markers of all colors, and a ruler in their school desk. Ils sont prêts. They are ready. All right, very good. So, this is your work for this week. You ready? 
I want you to learn this dialogue by heart. This time you don't have to come up with your own dialogue. I want you to learn it by heart. Send me a video with you saying your dialogue, okay? I want you to do your translation over here. Conjugate your verb prendre after you've learned it by heart, not by copying. I want you to just copy. So you need to be self-governed because I'm not here to know, but God knows. And I know that you can be self-governed. And you know, right now, just study hard. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Okay, so learn your verb prendre by heart and then write it down. And then you're gonna pull the correct form of de in the following sentence. So sometimes it's gonna be de, and then sometimes it's gonna be de. Sometimes it's gonna be de, and sometimes it's gonna be de. So look at your example, and then do your best to try to figure out which one you're gonna use over there. Well, over here. And then the number three is, you have learned all your IR verbs in the past lessons, so this is for you to um, use them there and conjugate them. Be, pay attention to the right pronoun, okay? So that you know how to conjugate it, all right? So this is your work for this week. I expect that you're gonna do a great job and I'll see you, je vous verrai à la prochaine vidéo. Au revoir les enfants, au revoir les jeunes.